Welcome back to another video, everyone. Uh, today we're here with another special interview. Uh, but as always, I'm joined by my co-host Corey. Good day, everybody. And uh, joining us today is none other than Gabriel Savage. Hey guys, how's it going? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. That's good. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you for doing this. So, um, starting off, were you a wrestling fan growing up? Yeah, a big, a big one. <laughs> a big one. Yeah, uh, I started watching wrestling when I was probably around six or seven years old. I uh, started watching on TV with my dad uh, when it was WrestleMania. Uh, WrestleMania. Uh, we were going to my uncle's house to watch WrestleMania. So yeah, I start uh, really young. Yep. yep. Any uh, favorites of yours growing up? Yeah, I would say Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, uh, Triple H, Kane. Kane was really a, a big, a big, uh, how to say that in English, but uh, like a, a big motivation for me. Okay. That's why I chose the choke slam as for my finish. So yeah. <laughs> The attitude air is always opinion. special here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, how did you get started in wrestling? What, what was your um, – what was your uh, – what's the word I'm looking for here? How did you get started in wrestling? I always wanted to do wrestling. But around here in Tragedy, there was no place at all to train for that. So that's why I chose martial art instead. But – in 2020, I think, I start to think about that and I was talking with my girlfriend and I was like, you know what, I think I would like to chase that dream, like to live it. So I start to look at, around so for a wrestling school and I saw that Troy Merrick had uh, his one to Cobra Clutch. So I was like, okay, it's now or never. So I chose to go there, get trained by Troy and here I am. How was Troy to train with? Because we had Troy on the channel before, and he is such a wonderful guy to talk to, such a nice guy, and he seems like a great teacher. Amy, amazing teacher. Like I can't, I can't ask for a better one. Uh, I have a special place for uh, for Troy in my heart because of that. Uh, it was, it was awesome. It was a great teacher, great mentor, and uh, and how can I say that? Is like uh, you won't say any bullshit. Is like it's white or black. There's no gray. It will it, it will tell you the truth, no matter what it is. So yeah, that's what I liked about about Troy. Yeah, sorry about that. My headphones went out, so I had to switch <laughs> no them out. Worries. Um, so doing little background research on you, uh, I don't know if the research I did was correct, but it shows that uh, you have three different black belts. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, uh, karate, taekwondo, and one's name a temo jutsu. It's like a a kind of Japanese jujitsu. I'm okay. also a blue okay. belt in BJJ, and I've been doing martial arts my whole life. I'm still doing did, it. I'm 30 you ever, years old. Uh, I start, you're only I start 30. When I want. Yep, 30. Oh, well, you're still a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, did you ever fight in the cage? Yep. I fought in MMA and I fought in uh, Muay Thai as well for the heavyweight uh, title uh, belt. The picture is right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> I lost, but it was a good experience. The experience is what counts, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So when you got started in wrestling, uh, you started in CAW, correct? Yeah, I had some uh, appearance appearance there. there. It was not matches, but that's... Probably the thing that gave me like the boost to do that train by throwing in 2022. Not long after that, uh, the AWO started. Akadi World yeah. Order. Yeah, yeah uh, it was. I can tell time. you guys are fans of uh, the old NWO. Um, yeah. You worked with Snake and Chaos and Jaws. Yeah. Uh, how are these guys to your career? Because they seem like they've really mentored you as well. Yeah, they helped me a lot. They opened the door for me. They gave me a chance when I was not trained yet. So yeah, it was cool to work with them. Uh, we still have some a good friendship. I still have a good friendship with them. Snake is my business partner. I still uh, go to CAW show and they, they come to uh, our uh, Real Savage one. So yeah, they were nice. You started 
as a baby face, but later on you turned heel with country cash. Um, yeah. yeah. How was the transition there from being a good guy, being cheered by everybody, and now you're being hated? And you have Country Cash, oh, the despicable yeah. Country Cash. Country Cash is uh, <laughs> he's the best. He's the best. Around here, you can't ask for a better manager. People like to hate him. And in, in the real life, like I'm, I'm not sure if I can tell that. I, I don't want to break the kayfabe, but Country <laughs> Cash is a pretty nice guy. <laughs> so... so it, yeah, it's pretty cool. And to turn ill, it was my my uh, idea. And I was like, you know what? I've been a baby face for a while. I want to try to be a heel now. I want to see how it is. And at first, it was difficult a little bit because people were swearing at me or calling me names and all that. And I took that personal at first. But then after that, I was like, you know what? Damn, I like it. <laughs> I don't blame you at all there because it has to be fun to have that control over the oh, crowd. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I prefer to be a heel than a baby face. But maybe in the future I'll be a baby face. Who knows? Who knows? You never know. Never know. I feel like if, if ever I would do something in wrestling, I'd prefer being a heel too. You can just yeah. do whatever you want. and Absolutely, yeah. It's it's fun. Uh, the only thing that I don't like, when I'm, I'm when I'm a, a, a eel, it's when I see my my daughter cry in the crowd because uh, people are calling me names and all that, and she's like, "No, that's my daddy," and she's crying. <laughs> she's only five years old, so, so she don't understand. But that's the only part that sucks. But other than that, I like to be a heel. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, Country Cash and Snake, you started Real Savage Pro Wrestling. And yes, I've yet to go to a show, but it's one of these promotions that's really caught everybody's attention. Uh, doing things so, yeah. outside the box, uh, bringing yep. in guys from Quebec. Um, how did this come about? You know, when I start to think about starting wrestling, when I start thinking about that, it was not about only about being a wrestler. In real life, I'm a businessman, a hoeing. Right now, I am in my uh, MME gym, so it was in my head. I was thinking, like, you know what? I want to be a wrestler, but I also want to create something in the future. I want to open my own promotion. So we're just talking, me and Snake, and one day came up, and I was like, you know what? It's maybe the time. Why are we waiting for? Like, we can do it right now. We have the ring. We have a lot of venue around here. People know me, people know Snake, there's a wrestling fan, so why not? So we start our first show with a big one. Marco Estrado was the main event. It was a, a nice one. And after that, uh, we did our fourth one. So in May is going to be our fifth one. Fifth yep. show, yep. I absolutely have to go. Joel's been to one. Good um job. That's one with me. I have another podcast, the BSHL podcast, where we follow, and we're in the finals right now. But uh, it's definitely something that's on my bucket list to see. And I know once I go to one, I'm going to want to go to more. So. And Joel came to the one with the uh, the less cr – like the crowd was the smaller one. You came in January, right, Joel? In January, yeah. Yeah, it was the smallest crowd we had. The show after that, it was a sold out, and the show before that, it was a sold out. <laughs> but it was still a it was, it was still a good show. I think. I, it was still a pretty big, big crowd, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've, I've definitely been to, to. Yeah, I've definitely yeah. been to a wrestling show with like less people. So. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. One thing that I want to know, uh, as you can see behind me, I'm a big ch fan of championship belts. And when I first heard of the All Territory Elite title, I immediately fell in love with the name. How did this name come about? Because I'm a fan of thinking outside the box, and you yeah. immediately remember that name. Yeah, that name I can't even remember. I think it was Snake. It, it came from Snake. I think he was the one saying like All Territory Elite because it's a championship that can travel all around. It, it won't just be in, around here. It can go to Quebec, it can go to Moncton, it can go to Nova Scotia, it can go everywhere. So we thought like, okay, 
it's an all territory and we want another name so we thought like okay there's not a lot of elite name in the titles around here so we said why not all territory elite and we said go <laughs> it worked very well because the second i heard we were talking about it on the podcast and i was like i absolutely love this <laughs> yeah it's different it's different we want to be different so that's it a different is and key. that's not our that's not our main title that's like the mid card title so you guys do have a world title coming coming in, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's gonna be a big one, a nice one, yeah. No, I can't wait to see it. Ah, uh, it's gonna be a beauty. <laughs> so are are you gonna win that one too eventually and be like the the quadruple crown champion? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to be like the big star of the RSPW. Like I don't mind right now to be like the mid card champion, but for how long I don't know. But for the main title, we want some big names. You know, in June, it's going to be uh, Giant Orion versus either Moondart or Narciss Saint. So it's going to be a, a good match for the belt. And in the future, we don't know. I'm sure you'll get there because uh, your career hasn't been that long, but you've grown like by yeah. leaps and bounds, just doing a great job. And... Um, you got noticed elsewhere in Quebec, and uh, you made your way to Lutte Academy. How was that? Yeah. That was a nice experience. Uh, it was last year. I'm still in this year, but last year it was a big one. You know, um, when I decide, it was just like one week left to try to participate in it. And I was not sure about that. So I sent a, a message to Jean Trujo, and I was like, uh, I just have last year. I just had maybe like one year of of uh, experience. So I was like, "Can I still participate?" He was like, hey, "Maybe just wait two or three years." And I was okay. But then he, he sent me another message, and it was like, "You know what? Take a chance. Send me a thirty second promo, forty five second action in the ring, and we'll see." And then you went to the Nightmare Factory with Q T Marshall, and they picked me. So that was a bit that was a bit surprise, and after that I went to the quarterfinal and QT Marshall picked me after the match, so I was moving to the semifinal and I was more surprised than ever. <laughs> but after that I lost in the semifinal, but whatever, <laughs> it is what it is. But it was a really nice experience. I had a great match at the uh, quarterfinal with the uh, Tal Zachary, who is a veteran in Quebec. He had like 20 years of experience. Just the fact that QT Marshall picked me after the match on the big screen, that's something in the, that I will never forget. And for the semifinal, it was a six-man tag, tag team match. I'm not a big fan. I love watching tag team match and six-man tag, but I'm not a big fan of being in one. And it was a big one. There was me, Sean Moore, Jesse V, a lot of good wrestler. So... It it doesn't it it blah, blah, blah. sorry, I'm French, you know, so I, I'm trying to speed fast sometime and whatever, but it just was not my night. It was not my night, so uh, I lost. But I'm still in it this year, so we'll see what happens. It still goes to show you though. With you said you had one year experience there, but you still made it to the semifinals with guys that have been in the ring like twenty years. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Did you get to meet Jacques Rougeau? Oh, yeah. How was me Jacques, Jacques Rougeau? Now, really nice guy. He was there for me from the beginning. Uh, he's still a guy that I talk to uh, often. Like, if I need to, some advice or something, I'm not sure. He's the one who got me in contact with QT Marshall because I'm leaving for the U.S. in next uh, January. So he was the one who helped me to get his contact number and all that. So, yeah, Jacques is still one of my uh, good friends. So How you excited are you to go to yeah. the, the, uh, Nightmare, the Nightmare Factory. Factory in January? I'm pumped. Uh, I can't wait. I'm counting the days, the, the weeks. Uh, it's still far. It's still in uh, nine or ten months. But it's going to be a fun experience. And like I said to my girlfriend, I'm 30 years old. 
I don't want to wait another 10 years and regret. My time is now or never. So that's why I said, like, let's go. What's the overall goal for Gabriel Savage? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years? Oh, uh, I would like to still wrestle in 10 years. I think at 40 years old, I could probably still hang around in the rain a little bit. Um, in 10 years, I would like to still own and have um, RSPW show. I would like to also probably have a wrestling school in 10 years. But if there's something I would like to achieve in the next two years, three years or whatever, I would like to at least have one AEW match. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I would like to have one. Yeah. No uh, goals for WWE? Well, I would like to go into <laughs> WWE, but after 30 years old, I think it's more difficult to get there. Maybe as the next throw, I don't know. But to have actually have a match there, I think it's going to be e not easier, but the chances are better for AEW than WWE. How long is your that. training going to be uh, with uh, the Nightmare Factory? Almost four months. Four months, wow. Okay. Yeah. F like 14 weeks. Okay. So you mentioned your French. Yeah. <laughs> Veux tu dire une coupe de mots pour tes fans? Oui, oui, sure. Uh, merci à tout le monde qui m'encourage. Merci à tout le monde aussi qui, uh, qui ont douté de moi. Il y en a beaucoup quand j'ai commencé dans la lutte. Je doutais un peu de moi. Je pensais, ah, oh, il fait bouquer beaucoup au début parce que tout le monde se fait bouquer beaucoup quand tu commences. Mais ça fait deux ans que je suis dans la lutte. Puis les bouquins continuent tout le temps d'augmenter. J'ai des opportunités qui augmentent de plus en plus. Cet été, je m'envoie à Saskatchewan, en Alberta. J'essaie de faire le tour du Canada avant de m'en aller aux US. Fait qu'un gros merci. Peu importe que le monde m'encourageait ou le monde n'était pas sûr de moi. Merci parce que ça a été vraiment. Euh, Vraiment une expérience comme le fun, je t'adapte, puis je vais continuer de, de faire ce job. Awesome stuff. So, you also own an MMA school where you, treat, you train the, the younger people. We just, uh, I was there when uh, Kylie and I can't remember the other girl, but they had the match in the ring. And then yep. at the last show, uh, it was a boxing match versus Kylie and Country Cash. And if Country awesome. Cash lost, he had to wear a dress. Oh yeah. Um, oh, how yeah. is it training the younger generation? Oh, it's fun. I love it. I'm there three to four days a week with them. I'm training. They train hard. Uh, some of them, like Kylie, you said, she's been training with me for five years. She started when she was eight years old. So yeah, I have a lot of students who have a lot of potential. It's nice to see because they work hard. I'm there to help them, but they are doing the work. They are training here. Sometimes, like last night, they were in here. They trained three hours straight. Three big wow. freaking hours. <laughs> like they were swinging like like crazy, but they never stopped. They never complained. They never said nothing. They always want more. So I like to see that. And I respect that. And yeah, just love it. Another Great quick question. Uh, did Country Cash pick out the color of his dress yet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't wait to see it because it's going to be a fun night. People might not, people know that you will wear a dress, but you will also come to the rain with the dress during my match, during, uh, oh, no, it's true. Owen is not there, but you will come to the, my, to the ring for my match. It will also probably go to the VIP tables to give some drain <laughs> before the show or something like that. We want to have something nice for the people there. So yeah, it's going to be a fun night. So, before we go, um, one question that just popped in my head. Uh, what's sure. the dream opponent for uh, Gabriel Savage? Any, anybody I, on your bucket list? Okay. Well, when I start, I had two on my bucket list. Well, I had three, to be honest, when I truly start. Uh, the first one was Frankie the Mobster. Oh, yeah. And I had my match with him. We did a match for T-U-W in Quebec. Okay. That was a fun match. I had a really good match with it. The other one is Marco Estrada because he's from around here. 
it's been a big motivation for me. Like, I'm from Portmush, New Brunswick. It's like a really, really small community around here. It's from Le Goulet, which is the, the same thing. Look at where Marto is right now, and I, like, it's a motivation for me. Oh, yeah. So I really want to have a match with him. And I, when I start uh, really wrestling after being trained by Troy, I wanted to have a match with Troy. And I was supposed to have one in uh, for our first show. But some, uh, Troy was not able to come, so that's probably going to happen probably next year or this year. I don't know. So that was that, that was my three opponents when I start. Right now, I have s some others in mind, but not sure yet who is going to be like the one that I want to face. Look, Frankie the Monster. From, yeah. He is one of those guys that just scares the daylights out of me. Beast but King FTM. He's so nice. Oh, yeah. But he's so nice. Such a nice guy. Our match was stiff, but so fun. <laughs> and yeah. He was, like, really, really cool before the match. And after that, he was giving me some advice. Uh, we did a 15-minute match, so it, and it was really, really good. I'll have to check that match out. For me, yeah. if I'd have to pick, like, an opponent that I'd like to see you face, I think you and Orion would do a great match. That's yeah. some, well, I'm going to face Orion in Wrestling Academy. The first match is going to be a tag team yeah. match. It's me and uh, John John Tavius versus Charlie Ubley and Giant Orion. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you fight Orion in the for, in the last season? No, I never, nope, never had a match no? with Orion. Yet. No. Orion, uh, in last year for Wrestling Academy, he faced uh, Jesse V, who won the competition. Jesse v, okay. Yeah. Orion got eliminated pretty early, correct? Yeah, quarterfinal yeah. against uh, Jesse V. It was a good match, though. It was on my card when I faced uh, Tal Zachary. He was there. So I watched the, the match, and it, it was a really good one. I've seen everything Lut Academy has, but it's been a year, it's been a year I think, since I've watched it. So I'll have to go and rewatch those. Yeah. So... Uh Something else that you actually do, uh, you actually have your own beer. I have two, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, you have two now. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I have that one, which is the first one that I that I had for my MMA gym. I'm not doing the beer. I'm I'm sponsored by Brasserie de la Côte, which yeah. is a local brewery around here. But they did that one a few years ago, and then after that, they did the G Savage one for my. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, to me, that's cool. like it's little things that it's like, oh man, that's so cool. Just having like yeah, a yeah. beer named after you, like yeah, that's something that I I still can't understand why, but I'm I'm happy about that. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's fun. It's a bragging right for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So before we go, what are you doing? What do you got to promote? This is your moment. Uh, well, we have our next show for RSPW, May 25th. Uh, I will be facing Reddit Stone in the main event for the All Territory Elite Championship. People uh, start saying that I was only wrestling uh, against small, small people, so I want to prove them wrong, so I'm going <laughs> to take a giant. Uh, other than that, on that card, René Dupree is going to be there yes. facing Lil Blay. Uh, Shitaka will defend her title against Ronnie Payne. Uh, there's gonna be it's gonna be a big night of matches because there's eight matches on that that night, so it's gonna be a big show. Other than that, I'll be in action next month in Halifax uh, for Downtown Wrestling. I have a lot of shows coming this summer as well. Like I said, uh, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, I plan to go to Vancouver as well. I plan to travel all around Canada before I'm going to the, the States in uh, January. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a well, fun we, time. I can't wait. We definitely look forward to seeing what you, you do next. Uh, we'll support you every step of the way in your career. Absolutely. And uh, let's uh, hope a year from now we'll see you on AEW as a regular. 
Never know. Never know. That's why I'm trying my best right now. I'm uh, working hard every day. And that's why I chose to go to the Nightmare Nightmare Factory as well. Cody Road is there. Uh, Chuty Marshall is there. Billy Gunn is there. There's a lot of people who can help me to achieve those dreams. So, yeah, I want to do the work and let's see where I go. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, that's it. going to be it for today's episode. Uh, we want to say thank you for Gabriel Savage for joining us today. Thank it was you, a sir. blast. Uh, thank you, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. Take care.